Yes, and we're here once again to give God praise, singing those hymns like we usually do. Oh yes, God we love the sweet fellowship in your presence. Oh yes, leaning on your arms. Come on now, so lift your hearts as we sing together, let's say. Leaning, come on now. And welcome to Take 5, a five-minute feature designed to inspire, 
and motivate you. I want to engage you today on the topic, bloom where you are planted. There is so much that we can learn from nature and the aspect of nature that I want us to learn from today is the lotus plant. The lotus plant is an aquatic plant it grows in murky, muddy, dirty waters, such as rivers and ponds. But there is so much that we can learn from this plant. One writer puts it this way, she says, The lotus flower blooms most beautifully from the deepest and thickest mud. That is the first thing that we can learn from the lotus plant. Even though it is growing in dirty, murky waters, it produces it grows, it blooms, and it does so beautifully. The second thing we can observe and learn from the lotus plant is that it does not conform to its environment. The lotus flower submerges into that dirty, murky water on an evening, and it emerges on a morning, and it emerges even more beautifully than it was the day before. It comes up with no grit or dirt or mud or anything of the sort on its petals and that tells me that the lotus plant does not conform to its environment likewise we too it does not matter which environment we find ourselves planted in we do not have to conform to our environment the next thing that we can learn from the lotus plant is that it reaches towards the sun as I was doing the research for this particular topic, one writer was saying that she had the opportunity to observe the lotus plant. And the one thing that she observed is that they are always, the flowers are always reaching towards the sun. I want you to do the same. We can learn from the lotus plant. In this analogy, your sun is your goals, your dreams, your potential, your purpose what your God-given talent, that is what your sun is. Those things represent your sun and like the lotus flower, it doesn't matter where you find yourself planted, in that dirty, mucky water, you have got to continue reaching always towards the sun. The next thing that we can learn from the lotus flower, and I think this is quite beautiful, is that it does not lose its ability to produce. Now, the lotus flower, the sea, that is, is said to be able to remain dormant for several years. As a matter of fact, somewhere in China, they were able to germinate seeds that lived as long as 1300 years. The lotus flower does not lose, the lotus seed does not lose its potential to produce. Once that seed, even though it may be, you know, wrapped up in muddy and, and mud and sediments and that kind of thing, once that seed finds itself in the right environment, the right soil, where moisture and so on it is, once it becomes hydrated, it produces, it grows, it blooms. And so that tells me that the lotus plant does not lose it puts its potential to produce and likewise it doesn't matter where you find yourself you may not be in the ideal circumstances at the moment something but something is very deep within you you will never lose your potential you just have to find the right soil the right environment and once you find yourself in the right environment and the right soil once the, the conditions are right your potential is still there. You do not lose your potential based on the environment that you are in. Bloom where you are planted. Your potential to produce never dies. Your God-given talents are never taken away from you. So that is another thing that we can learn from the, uh, from the lotus plant. The final thing I want us to observe from the lotus plant is that it grows in deep waters. Six to eight feet. The stalks are so long, you would see that they, and the flower is above the water, you would see that the leaves are a little closer down to the, to the water, but the flower sits above the water. It grows in, in water six to eight feet 
deep and that's actually how deep the roots of the plant goes so these are some things that i want us to learn from the lotus flower it doesn't matter what your circumstances it doesn't matter which environment you may find yourself in like the lotus flower you can bloom beautifully wherever you find yourself planted i want to leave you with the words of jeremiah verses 7 chapter 17 that is verses 7 and 8 and he says blessed is the one who trusts in the lord whose confidence is in him they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream it is not fair when he comes its leaves are always green it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit don't let your environment stunt your growth and detract from your beauty where are you planted i encourage you to be bloom where you are planted i am leona thank you for joining me see you next time Good day everyone. I'm Dr. Nadine Isaac Dennis and today it's my pleasure to share this testimony and song entitled It Ain't Over Until God Says It's Over. I pray that you would indeed be blessed. I know the odds look stacked up against you and it seems there's no way out I know the issue seems unchangeable and there is no reason to shout but the impossible is God's chance to work a miracle, a miracle. So just know it ain't over yet until God says it's over. It ain't over until God says it's done. No, no. Until the victory is won. I know it's not gonna be easy, but you're gonna win. Jesus defeated. Oh, you're right.
share a few thoughts with you and as we commit ourselves uh, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Men of spirit, men of worth, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, which I normally call the hall of fame, but it's really the spiritual heroes we find in that book, not so? 
Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, we find one named Joseph. What's his name? Uh, the 12th son of the patriarch Jacob. Of course, Joseph was the apple of his eye. You know all of that. And his brothers became very jealous of him. And so they decided really to kill him. But providentially, they sold him instead. Because God was always in control. Uh, for the next few moments, so why did I choose Joseph as our specimen, as an investment for eternity? Well, first off, please note, as you read the book of Hebrews when you get back home, that the 11th chapter of Hebrews have the same common denominator, and that is faith. You'd read, and by faith. By what? Faith. By faith. And of course, we do know, but just for our revision, faith is the substance of things what? Hope for the evidence of things. So what lessons can we learn from Joseph that will encourage us today, men of spirit and men of word? Well, just to cut to the chase, if we as men see our existence from a mere physical dimension and not from a spiritual dimension, we are doomed like Esau to sell our birthright for a morsel of meat. Uh, are you listening, men? Now, of course, our wives are here today, uh, but we need to take note that please do not allow our wives to have us so stretch ourselves that we lose sight of the real investment. If I were to just say, my father told me that when I was about to get married, he said, please, son, let your wife know how much money you are earning. So I said, why should I do that? He said, well, if you don't tell her how much you are earning, she can ask you for any amount. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I can't go down that road, but we, I know the ladies would, wouldn't want me to come back to say more. I'm um, really on that. But Joseph, quickly to close, but Joseph, as you know, being sold to Potiphar that in Egypt, going to prison and ending up prime minister in Egypt, they tell us in our modern day psychology, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the physiology, the physiological safety, love and belonging, esteem and self-actualization, that he achieved all of that. It meant that after achieving all of that, men feel very accomplished, not so? But not Joseph. Joseph did not feel that that was the end. Why? Because he had invested in eternity. He had what? Uh, it would, time wouldn't permit me to tell you that Joseph did not have dual citizenship. It will take us some time, so, but just to let you know, he did not have dual citizenship. His citizenship was one, and that was to go back to the land of Israel. If men are spirit and men of word, if we must hold on to anything today, we must not lose our citizenship. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior and was baptized, we are now citizens of the heavenly kingdom. We are no longer citizens of the earthly kingdom. And therefore, we are to be led by the spirit and not by the things of the flesh. As I, as I close, the apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.20, For our citizenship is where? Our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we do what? Also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, for his coming. And so this is what Mrs. White had to say as it relates to Joseph. Quoting from the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 240. When he, referring to Joseph, saw that his end was near, he summoned his kinsmen about him. Honored as he had been in the land of Egypt, it was not to him, it was to him only the place of his exile. His last act was to signify that his lot was cast with Israel. His last words were, God will surely visit you 
and bring you out of this land into the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And he took a solemn oath of the children of Israel that they would carry up his bones with them in the land of Canaan. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now listen to this. And through the centuries of toil which followed the coffin, a reminder of the dying words of Joseph, testify to Israel that they were only sojourners in Egypt and bade them keep their hopes fixed upon the land of promise for the time of deliverance would surely come. If time would permit me, I'd let you know that our time of deliverance is nearby. Uh, this world is not our home. We are just passing through. And as men of spirit, men of word, we must ensure that we invest in eternal things. Not in transient, not in things that would pass away, but that we should invest in what? In eternal things. Uh, Joseph had a 2020 vision. Uh, I said Joseph had a 2020 vision. And today is a good day for us to recommit ourselves as we are soon to enter the year 2020. And so we must have that focus on God. We must allow the things of this world to grow, but strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Where is your citizenship today? Where is your citizenship? May we refocus. May we ensure that our citizenship is in heaven. So men of worth, men of spirit, what we need to do is that we need to give ourselves completely to God and not to allow the things of this world to buy us, to sell us, to move us around. Well, just take these three things with you. As men, we must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Place more value on God's word than on your necessary food. Two, do not be presumptuous. Don't test God by moving away from biblical principles, but trust him and trust him again. Do I hear you say amen? amen. And three, when alert to bow down and worship the things of this world, take your stand in the power of the Holy Spirit and declare to Satan and his host of evil angels that you shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve him only will you serve why because you are a citizen of heaven today i want to call men of spirit men of word to recommitment the recommitment today is simple please do not exchange your bible for your pocketbook please do not ex exchange eternity for time. You are here today in the quiet of the hour. I invite men of spirit and men of word to stand with me. I know it's a whole lot of us and it's uh, pretty crowded for all of you to come forward today as we recommit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And remember Joseph. Just imagine that when God visited the children of Israel who were residing in Egypt, they had two passports, but they gave up one because God moved them from Egypt back to the promised land. Interestingly to note, if you have never noted it before, what legacy would we leave for those to follow us? The one legacy we must leave as men is that we must invest for eternity. And so they traveled with the bones of Joseph for over 450 years. And those bones were eventually buried in the land of promise.
my life.